In the next couple videos, I'm going to be showing you how I made these two mudroom built-ins. They look a little blotchy here because I did some paint touch-ups before I left, so some of that paint's still a little wet. Um, this title's kind of clickbaity, but um, I think putting that out into the universe sometimes has manifestation in the real world. And I do hope I don't get another built in for quite a while. I've done three of these this year and they're just a lot of work for one person. But as you can see, this customer wanted drawings because they had to fit a particular space. And that means I will eventually have plans for this one available. I'm not gonna turn the unit by the refrigerator into plans because that was very specifically sized for the wall as well as the size of the fridge. But the standalone unit, I think anyone could turn that into a unit for their home. So I will be turning that one into plans. As always with my plans, I show you all my sizes in these videos because the videos are kind of meant to go with the plans. So if you don't wanna buy them and you wanna make something like this, you don't have to buy the plans because I show you all of my measurements. But basically these built-ins start out with a lot of three quarter inch um, maple veneer ply and the bulk of the beginning of this process is just cutting everything down. This is part of the reasons I don't like these built-ins. It's a lot of material. My shop's not huge, so cutting down full sheets of ply is always a little bit of an acrobatic feat. And then the unit itself takes up so much space. I started this in September, the end of September. Didn't get installed because of my schedule and the customer schedule until the beginning of November. So it just takes up a lot of space in that time as well as being um, a difficult process for one person. So as you can see I'm building this in two parts. I'm starting with the bottom. I'm putting, I like to build my, my built-ins with dados and rabbits. I think this is something that you can do with butt joints and pocket hole screws. I just prefer the more solid joint of dados and rabbits but you can translate this information to omitting them and using butt joints if you like. So the bottom portion of this, it's all the same size, these vertical portions, when you saw my cut list in the beginning. So I just cut those all down to size and then the two end pieces will have a rabbit for the backer as well as a rabbit for the top. The backer is gonna be half inch ply, so that's a half inch rabbit. The top's gonna be three quarters of an inch, so that's a three quarter of an inch rabbit. I don't show the unit that I'm building by the fridge as much, because like I said, it's a more specialized unit, but that was just a highlight of that piece. For my face frames, I prefer solid joints for these as well. Recently, I've been using somewhat of a tongue and groove style design with tongues on the plywood carcasses and grooves on the face frames. So before I put all this together, I add those grooves. It is an extra process, but I find it makes attaching the face frame and keeping everything square easier. Um, with this sort of joinery, it, that is uh, tried and true throughout the entire process. It's more work in the beginning, which I personally think leads to a more structurally sound unit, um, easier to glue up, easier to keep square, especially if you're putting doors and drawers on these things. I also find them sturdier because all this has to be transported. There's a lot of torsion going on with pieces as you're carrying them into people's home, and it just makes for an easy install as well. Once I had all that done, I could work on the tops as well as the backer. So like I said, most of this process is just cutting down plywood to size. Um, so I'll rip boards on the table saw, as you can see here, and then I will cut them down to size on the radial arm saw. That radial arm saw when doing built-ins is a huge time saver because I could keep a dado stack in there, I could keep a regular blade in there, and use both of the tools in tandem. This can cut into a board about 17 inches, so you could see I could flip it and I have it dialed in enough that it, it gives me a pretty accurate cut by flipping it, and it's just, uh, unless you have a, a sliding compound miter saw or something like that, it, this just is, is more versatile. So I have all the dados laid out for my top and my back. 
and then I did a test fit to make sure that that will fit into place. If you're buying a large stack of plywood, especially from a place like Lowe's or Home Depot, which I prefer to do because I get a discount on delivery because I have a business card, it just makes my life easier. I don't have to go pick up 10 sheets of plywood. Um, they're not always the same thickness. So make sure you measure all your materials before doing this. More than once I have cut 23 30 seconds dados or three quarter inch dados based off of one piece of ply only to find out that that one was odd sized and my other ones don't fit so just make sure to do that so for this i'm cutting that center dado first and then i could go through and cut it on the backer I'm putting a shallow dado on the backer i usually don't do this you can see i actually have to shim it with a quarter inch piece of ply so that it's the same thickness as the three quarter. That's how I got around that. And that is because there is no base for this unit. Those vertical panels are essentially free floating. I thought this was a little bit of overkill in the beginning, but I kicked those bottom panels so much in my shop. I was happy I took the time to make sure I put dados in the backer as well as the top so it gives me a more solid joint since those are essentially free floating. Um, if they were butt jointed with screws, I think I would have knocked them out of place just in my shop. And then obviously in the customer's house, I was lucky they had um, a newer LVP floor so I was able to screw right into it. If you're putting this on top of some sort of harder material to screw into you it, you'll be happy you put that at those added supports in there so as you saw all i did was i used um, a, a spacer for cutting all of those i was able to cut them and flip all of them to get the dados and the rabbits like i keep saying it's a longer process but it, it tends i think leads to not only a superior product but easier down the road so for this wider panel that's next to the refrigerator, I'm only doing these shallow dados. You could see um, shallow as in they don't go the full thickness of the, the panel, so they're stop dados. And then I could lower the blade onto this one and put that in there as well. And that's because as you saw in the beginning photo, those shelves don't come the full area of that side panel, they, they do stop. So that construction was a little bit different. Then I could just go through and put the rabbit on the uh, top side of that of the, the the backer, and then the topper is also going to get a rabbit to sit on top of the backer. So that is what this is. Um, on these longer pieces, I'll sometimes send these through twice. I use, I made a feather board that pushes down on the tops of these so that that dado comes out perfectly. But I have lost bits and pieces of it when I move, so I just send these through twice. And then, like I said, these ones will also get that that um, tongue on the front for the face frame. So I sent those through. You saw the first time I did it, I sent it through on a vertical fence. But then afterwards, I decided to send them through horizontally. It was a little bit easier. Uh, both ways works. So to glue this up, I did one piece at a time. So you see I put that center piece in, screwed it in place, and then I could put the top on and just get everything true and screwed into place. The nice thing about built-ins are only one side of both of these built-ins is going to be visible. So I just decided to go with screws all the way through instead of clamps. The screws essentially act like clamps. And then the two edges of the screw holes, because this is painted, you can get away with a lot with painted materials. All I did was putty them before I put primer on. You can't tell that it's screwed in place. It just makes life easier, especially since I don't have a lot of um, long clamps. So with the bottoms done, I could start on the tops. There's multiple tops and this top unit's quite large, so I'm making it in two pieces. The bottom was one piece, it wasn't that heavy, I could carry it without a problem. So I basically just had to once again rip a bunch of these. I was able to get, um, I believe, two, two sides out of each, each piece of ply. And then the leftover scrap I was able to use for shelves. So piecing out this material is really important. So there will be a cut list in the plans, but like I said, I think this was 10 sheets 
of three quarter inch ply. It might have been eight. I think the original dimensions were 10. And then I explained to them because this was all supposed to be a little bit thicker, a little deeper. I think it was originally over 24 inches. And to save on money, we cut down the depth of it so that you could get more pieces out of one sheet of ply. But as you can see, exact same process. I have my cut list. I'm cutting, I think it's something ridiculous, like eight sides. They're all gonna have the same rabbits and dados, the same tongue and groove on the front, the same rabbit on the back for the backer. Now, two of these are double-sided because they're in the middle. So unfortunately for this process, I'm doing the exact same thing on the radial arm saw. I have my stop in place and I could cut all of my grooves with one setup. But I like to go halfway through this three quarter inch ply. So I like to do three eighths inch dados. And you just can't do that with the middle because that means you'll cut through the whole piece. So what I did was I did quarter inch dados. I have everything set up the same way. And then I'm just gonna have to lower the blade and I'll always already have the groove there so it will be pretty easy. And I'll just have to, to, to make those um, side panels thicker. Um, it was a little bit longer of a process, but the important part when you're doing rabbits and dados is that they're all oriented and symmetrical and the same. And so it was important to me this first go around to have, it was important to have all of those stops set up identical for cutting all of the pieces. Like I said, it, me it meant going back and making the side panels a thicker dado, but it was worth that process. So you can kind of see I laid out my measurements there and you could just pause this if you wanna get some of these measurements and then I could start on the shelves. So that is the, the cutout for the shelves. I did some test pieces. I always do this because these, these built-ins have to be a specific size, especially in this circumstance because there's doors in the way. And when I did this, it was a little too long. It was about an eighth of an inch too wide. I'm, having installed this at this point, I'm especially happy I went through and cut these down because this there was the, the walls are never square when installing these and it butted out from the wall a little bit more than I thought. So the leeway I left in this, I used. So you can see I needed these two to be um, 39 and a quarter. They're 39 and an eighth because what happened is my center dados weren't as thick as in my drawings. So I just went through and cut the shelves an eighth of an inch off of both and then it fit perfectly and I could go through and make um, the rest of them. So this was the stack um, and this looks like these were all miscuts. They weren't, this was just left over. It was happened to be close enough in size left over from the cutoffs of the edge of plywood. So like I said, once I knew everything fit, I can then once again cut all this stuff down. With all my shelves cut, I can now start adding the dados and then the, the, the tongues to the front of these. It's easier to do when you have all of your pieces cut to do the tongues all at once so that they're, 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 the, they are the exact same size for when you cut the groove in the poplar. So for my uh, panels, my vertical panels, I cut them, I split them into stacks of three at this point because um, you, if you make them all identical, then you'll have either all right-hand sides or all left-hand sides. The groove for the backer has to be on opposite sides for these, kind of like a book, in order for them to match up on the ends. Obviously, the middles um, aren't as, as uh, steep. They're cut off so that they hit the backer. So those, those are trimmed by um, a half of an inch. Now I already cut that groove on the bottom. Ideally, you can do this all at once, but I built these in two sections to make my life a little bit easier. So I made a test piece of that groove to make sure it would match on the top once again so I could cut all the identical grooves in the poplar. So once I had that set up in there, um, I could just cut all these. You can see I have my entire stack of pieces and it's just a matter of sending it through, flipping it and sending it through again. On the long ones, the quality of the plywood these days is not great. It's pretty warped. Um, so I will send through the longer pieces twice because um, you want those grooves to be perfect the whole way through. Sometimes if you don't do that, you get little um, undulations in it and then the poplar will not fit. 
So then at this point, like I said, I could cut the backer. These were, uh, what were they, the 39 or so inches wide. So you could cut that down the table saw and then cut off the top with the circular saw. Like I said, you get away, away with a lot with paint quality materials. The circular saw doesn't leave the nicest edge, but it's gonna be cheated towards the top. You'll never see it. And then I use ratchet straps to kind of mock all this stuff up. I have screws in all of it, so it's held together with screws. And this will get a laminate top. So that's why I have the shims on this one part. And you could see how this one side dead ends into those dados that I cut on that longer panel. I cut those, like I said, all at the same time so that they are all identical. So I had these already, um, like I said, dry fitted together. So gluing these together was pretty easy if you do that first. I could just take one side off, it's already square, take one side off, add glue to it, and then reattach it, do the exact same thing to the other side, and then do the exact same thing to the middle. For one side of the middle, I could screw it together. The other side I won't be able to, so I use ratchet straps until this sets up and the backer's in place, and then all those screws will hold everything in place. So there's that, I can add the backer. The backer on these for me is very important, especially something like this. I'm assuming they're gonna be screwing hooks into this. So you want a solid backer. It also really helps square things up and it makes it so that these aren't parallelograms. They can't shift or move with that solid backer in place. So I like to add chalk lines for where I need to put all my screws. Um, at this point, I already have a couple screws in so I could take my ratchet straps off. I can measure my diagonals, make sure that they're perfect. That's how you can tell if this is square. And then I could go through and just add all of those backer screws in and really sure up this whole cabinet. So for this side, it's not permanently attached to that long piece. So this, this is just going to be um, glued but then temporarily screwed into that longer side and then that is basically what these look like at this point the, these are the main carcasses this will be a couple part series next will obviously be the face frame and then I'm doing something a little different for this one by the customer's request it's an MDF laminate top so that will also be in there there's going to be a torsion box in this build as well